Hey, welcome back. Uh, tonight's lesson we're going to talk about a square part and we're going to do some circular patterns on it. We're also going to have some, some radiuses that are tangent to other radiuses and and the main thing is we're going to circular pattern with a rectangular part. You think that I can circular pattern with this feature here, but I'm going to put it in last. So we're going to show you how to do that if it doesn't actually have the circular center in it. Uh, so dimensionally, uh, we're going to look at um, this right here. So basic shape of the part is going to be a rectangle. It's going to be four inches long, one inch thick, and an inch and a half tall. Now we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, a lot of these dimensions are missing and they're just kind of placed here where we can actually see what's going on with it. So we're just going to call out one side of it and really it's this position where we can see what's going on. Our material, when we start out, we're going to make it a AISI 1020 and then let's go ahead and get started. So let's make sure that our uh, software is in inch pounds and per inch pounds seconds. So let's create a new part and OK. I'm going to verify that I am in inch pounds and seconds down here and I am on the bottom right. If not, we can change that in our properties tab. So let's start with a simple extrusion to begin with. So select extruded boss base. I'm going to use the front plane. I'm going to come up and select a center rectangle. Uh, place it on the origin. Pull it out somewhere around there. Uh, it doesn't really matter because we're going to size it. So it's 4 by 1.5 tall. And then we want to exit our sketch and it should put us back in extrusion mode since we selected that to begin with. I want to use the mid plane command and we also know that this was one inch thick. So I'm going to hit one inch and I'm going to accept it with a green tick, a green check mark. All right. So now we've got our basic shape. So we want to create this uh, cut down at the bottom. for just. So let's select extruded cut. I want to pick this face here. And I'm going to use two radiuses. So I'm going to come up and select a three-point arc. I'm going to start on this bottom edge. Make sure it's coincident here. Pull the arc out like this. Um, if you're over here on the sides, it's really tough to control. So I like getting in the middle of it and having some pretty decent control on it. So I'm going to pull it up and just place it down somewhere around here. Don't let it really snap to anything else. And now I'm ready to put another arc out here. So I'm going to select on the end point. And then the bottom edge again, make sure that it doesn't snap to the midpoint there. Now we want to add a relation. So notice this one is baby blue and this one's a darker blue. So if I select add relations, I look over here to my left in my selected entities. So I do have this one selected. So the next thing I want to do is select the first arc that we drew. And I want to make sure that those two are tangent. Now dimension wise, when we were looking at this earlier, uh, we have a radius of 0.625 on this side. This radius is two inches long. It's one inch from the left hand side to the center point of this radius. And it's also 0.188 down from this bottom edge to this, this center point. This one looks like it's in alignment, but it's really not. I'm going to show you a trick here and I'm going to create an error while we're doing this as well. All right. So next thing we want to do, we've, we've accepted that, that it's a tangent. We want to select smart dimension. We said this arc was 0.625. This one was 2. Now, from this bottom edge to the center point of our arc was 0.188. And from the left edge over to the center point was 1. And notice this arc turned black. This one's still blue. It's really in a kind of funky shape. It said that the high point of this was 0.438 or 0.4375 up. I'm not really sure where this thing is 0.4375 up, but I'm pretty sure that our dimensions here won't allow us to have uh, a 716 dimension from here to here. So I'm going to select the bottom edge. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to pick here and I'm going to place it and it's going to yell at me. So I'm just going to make this dimension driven. All right. So now what that's telling me is that this is too far up from here for all this other math that's going on. So I'm going to come over and grab this end point where these two arcs meet. And now I'm going to rotate it around to where this side is a little bit higher. So I'm going to select a smart dimension, pick my bottom edge, hold my shift key down, pick the second arc that I drew, place it down, and I want to make it 0.4375. 
So we now have this fully defined. Just because you think that it's going to go to this point, um, mathematically it may not work out. So you have to think about these alternate solutions where the problem may really come into a different, different way that it's called out or somebody may have called it out incorrectly. So I'm going to exit this sketch. We'll take this thing around to see where we are. All right, so my cut is coming up. I don't really want to do that. I want to flip the side to cut because I want to remove this and I want to make sure that we go through all just in case we um, change the width, width of this thing. So we now have this kind of odd shape cut in here. So I'm going to use my control seven and looking at it in an isometric view, I want to add some reference geometry. So I come up to reference geometry and I'm going to select an axis because I want to do a revolve pattern, a circular pattern. All right, so when I'm going to do this, I'm going to make it use uh, the two planes. So now I really can't pick my plane, so I come up to the tree and I'm going to expand it out. And the top plane and the right plane, that's going to be the two where it bisects. That's where I want to use that. So I select the top plane and I select the right plane. And it's got an axis right in the middle of my part, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Now we want to use a circular pattern command. So up under the linear patterns, drop this down, select circular pattern. Now notice since that was highlighted, it's still up in my first selection window. I have a quantity of two uh, equally spaced. And now the feature that I want is this last cut. So I select the cut extrude, gives me the preview, and now I'm going to go ahead and accept it. So I now have those two those two cuts, this one and this one. So I didn't have to go recreate all of this. I was actually able to use a circular pattern with a rectangular part. Now this one is offset just a little bit as well. So we've got a half inch radius or a one inch diameter circle. It's five sixteenths over from the left edge and five eighths up from the bottom. So let's go ahead and place that in there and then we'll try another circular pattern. All right, so I'm gonna rotate this around. We wanna select extruded cut again. I'm gonna pick this face. I'm going to select a circle, place it out here somewhere. Uh, now we have to size it and locate it. So the diameter is one or our radius is a half. Uh, from the bottom edge to the center of the circle is 0.625. Notice I picked anywhere on the circle and it defaulted to the center. So I picked the left edge and the circle and that was 516 or 0.313. And now we're fully defined. So we have this circle on this face. So let's exit this sketch and we want to create a cut and we want it to go through all. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And now we have a cut in here. Now remember, same thing as we patterned right here last time. Let's go ahead and try that again. Circular pattern. Um, so this time I was down in the features. I want, to, I want to make sure that I come and I pick this in order. So my top is going to be my pattern axis. So that was the axis that we have here. And the feature that we want is that last cut. Now notice I didn't pick it out of the tree this time. So you can pick these out of the graphics area as well. Just be cautious when you do that. Make sure that you grab the right thing. So go ahead and accept it. So now we have this cut and it's patterned here. This cut and it's patterned over on this side. So that's another added benefit for making your part symmetric about the three planes that it, software gives you. All right, so the last thing that we want to do is we want to put our uh, hole wizard that was in here, and I think it was for a 5 16 uh, cap screw. I'm going to hide my axis just to allow us a little bit of clear, clarification on here. So let's use the hole wizard, and we're going to use a counterbore type, and make sure that you're an ANSI inch, make sure that you have a socketed cap screw. Size is going to be 5 16 uh, The fit, just leave it as normal. I'm not worried about custom sizing. And I'm not make sure that we don't have near side or far side countersink selected. So now that we've got our parameters here and we're ready to move forward to where we want to position it, come up and select the positions tab. It's going to ask you where you would like it. Now, I don't necessarily have to pick a 3D sketch, but I want to place it on this face here. So I'm going to use my control A command to kind of put it around normal to me. And I want to place it just on the center of our point of origin place it there. I'm fully defined down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and accept this. And we now have a counterbore type hole. We now have the part that we're looking for other than our material. So let's go ahead and add our material. And I think it was uh, ASI 1020. So come up here. This is a right click command. So select hover over the material, 
right click we want to edit our material uh, come down and pick the material that you want ours is AISI 1020 we apply it and close and now we have our material selected uh, let's just come up here and hit evaluate and we find out what something like this would weigh so the density is just the default the mass and this is going to be about 1.3 pounds and then our volume uh, is going to be about four and a half pounds, for four and a half cubic inches so once you've got all that done and all your numbers look like that go ahead and save this and we need you to submit that in your learning management system thank you and we'll talk to you the next time